Hello, my name is Kishwani. <coughs> That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's Official Study Guide, Version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we're working together. Today is our lesson number 24, we are on page number 130 and today we'll talk about the concept of proportions. Ratios and proportions, they come together. We talked about what ratios are yesterday, we discussed that concept, ratios. Ratios are things that are like, ratios deal with like things, like things as in things that can be added or subtracted, like boys and girls, blue candies and red candies, blue cars and red cars, teachers and students. We can add them, we can subtract them, we can ask at the end how many people that are there total if the ratio of students to teacher is this much. How many total cars are in the parking lot if the ratio of like, the, the blue cars to red cars uh, is such and such. Do you understand? Proportions on the other hand, let's talk about proportions. Today we'll deal with the next concept which is proportion. Proportions on the other hand, not the ratios, proportions on the other hand, Proportions, on the other hand, deal with unlike things. Deal with unlike things. Things, things that can, things that can not, that cannot be added or subtracted. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's look at a couple of very simple examples uh, to make you understand what I mean by things that cannot be added or subtracted. For example, if I tell you that one book, one book cost say three dollars and the question is how many books can I buy with twelve dollars I have twelve dollars how many books can we buy well we can certainly figure it out by setting it like this we, by setting it like this books and dollars one book cost three dollars see books over dollars I have twelve dollars how many books can I buy and we can figure it out very easily but having done so at the very end, it would make absolutely no sense at all to ask ourselves proudly, so how much is $12, how much is $12 and 5 books? We cannot, we cannot go around dollars, we cannot go around adding or subtracting dollars and books. It makes no sense to ask ourselves how much is $7 and 3 books. We can't add them, we can't subtract them, they are proportions. They, they are proportions. They deal with unlike things. They cannot be added or subtracted. Here's another example. Another very simple example. If I tell you, if I tell you that I get 20 miles, 20 miles per gallon out in my car. My car, the mileage, my car gives me 20 miles of, of, uh, of travel for each gallon. That's what I get, 20 miles per gallon. How far can I go in three gallons? Well, obviously, if I can go 20 miles in one gallon, in three gallons, I'll go 60 miles. But as at the very end, it will make absolutely no sense. It will make absolutely no sense to ask ourselves, so how much is, so how much is 20 miles plus 5 gallons? It makes no sense. You can't go around adding miles or miles and gallons. It cannot be done. Those are two unlike things. For things to be added or subtracted, they have to be like things, they have to be similar things, and those are called ratios. When we're dealing with two things that cannot be added or subtracted, those are called proportions. And that's the only difference. Otherwise, they behave the same way. The work, the mathematical part is the same. The difference lies in the, in the concept. The conceptually, they are different. Let's look, at, let's look at a couple of pro proportion problems. Now that we understand the concept, let's look at a couple of problems from the book. Here's the first one. This is an this is example that I give you on page number 100 and. 113 and then we'll do one problem from 114 in the practice problems. Pra practice problem number 4 on the next page, 114. Let's first look at the example that they give you on page number 113. We are told that the, on, on a map, on a map, the scale, the scale that is used is 1 centimeter represents 20 miles. That's what the legend tells us. On the scale, on, on, on the map, it tells us that if you see a distance of one centimeter, that's 20 miles. Here's the question. The question is, how far apart, how far apart are two two cities? The distance between two cities 
there are 6.4 cm apart on the map. I'm not writing it down. I'm going to write down everything. The question is how far apart are two cities that are represented on this map with a distance of 6.4 cm. Let's see what we can do. So we're dealing with two things. We're dealing with miles and centimeters. Makes no difference which one you deal with first. Absolutely no difference as long as you're consistent. So here we go. Centimeters and miles. This is how you set it up. And we, we are told that one centimeter one centimeter represents a distance of 20 miles. That's how we set it up. The question is how far, how far are two cities located in actuality, in real life? How far are they located if they are represented on the map as being 6.4 centimeter apart? So that's a centimeter here. So that goes here, 6.4. That's all. All we have to do is solve for x. The student at the top, I'm going to raise all this thing so that we have the room. So we're going to continue this on the top. So we cross multiply, 1 times x is going to give us x. 20 times, 20 times 6.4. That's all. Instead of, instead of trying to figure out what is 20 times 6.4 is, you can make your life easier by breaking the 20 into 10 times 6.4, that's what I would do, times 2. It's perfectly, it's perfectly logical to, to write 20 as 10 times 2. The reason we did that is because now we can very easily multiply 6.4 by 10. 6.4 multiplied by 10, all you have to do is pick up your pick up your decimal and move it one place. 10 times 6.4 is 64, so we have 64 times 2. And now we have to figure out what 64 times 2 is. And that can also be very easily done. I'm going to do it a little bit lower so that you can see what I'm doing. 64 times 2. 60 times 2 is 120. And 4 times 2 is 8. It is 128. The answer is these two cities are 128 miles apart in real life because they are represented with a distance of 6.4 centimeters on the map which has a scale of 1 centimeter being 20 miles. A small distance of 1 centimeter on the map is actually 20 miles. Let's do one more, shall we? The next problem that we'll do is, is also the same problem dealing with the map and the scale but it's a problem that appears on the next page Problem number four. So now we are on page number 114. Number four. One of the practice problems. And the question says that now the scale that we have is one centimeter we are told is 75 miles. We are told that the distance between two cities on the map is 8.6 centimeter and the question is how far apart they are how far apart are they rather how far apart are they and the reason I wanted to do this questions in particular on the blackboard with you is because I want you to understand the importance of the answer choices not just the question itself but the answer choices the answer choices themselves are equally important because answer choices tell you, answer choices dictate how much work you should put into a given question. Let's look at the answer choices. You will see what I mean by that in a second. Here are the answer choices. 8.7 miles, 66.4 miles, 82.6 miles, and finally 645 miles. The answer has to be one of these four. Let's see what we can do. So we're going to set it up as centimeters and miles, centimeters over miles. We are told that one centimeter represents a distance of 75 miles. That should be miles, not 75. Centimeters over miles. We are told that we are told that one centimeter represents a distance of 75 miles. The question is, how far are the two cities? How far are they in reality if they are represented on the map as being 8.6 cm apart? Let's see what we can do. That's, a, that's an equal sign. Let's see what we can do, shall we? We need the room, so I'm going to do it on top here. So they're being represented as being 8.6 cm apart 
we have to solve for x. Multiply both sides, cross multiply it. One time x is going to give us x. And here we end up with 75 times 8.6. 75 times 8.6. And this is where we're going to pause for a second. When you get to when you get to nasty numbers like this, whenever you get to nasty numbers like this, 75, I'm not going to sit there and try to figure out the bloody thing. What is 75 times 8.6? It's tedious, it's annoying. It's just a nuisance. That's your clue, that's your, that's your cue rather, not clue, that's your cue, C-U-E-Q, that's your cue, that's your hint that maybe it's a good idea to look at the answer choices. 75 times 8.6, would you agree that 75, 75 times 8.6, let's just say 70, 70, that's approximately the same as 74, 75 times 9. We know 75 times 10 is 750. Well, even if we didn't do this approximation, can 74, can 75 times 8, forget about the point 0.6 right now, can 75 times 8 be 8? Can 75 by some other number, 8.6, can it just be 8.7? Of course not. When you multiply 70 by, 75 by something more than 1, which is this is, 75 times 2 is 150. If 75 times 2, if you double seven, if you double 75, you get 150. If 75 times 2 is 150, how can 75 times 8 be 66? If 75 times 2 is 150, how can 70, 75 times 8 be only 86, 82 rather? It's no sense. The answer is 625, uh, 645. You don't have to do it out actually. Do you understand? Another way we could approach this thing, another way we could approach this thing, uh, very quick way, is to pretend that it is x is approximately 75 times is 8.6, which you can approximate as 9, I'm going to approximate as 10. That's 750. But it is not 10, it's only 8.6, which means the correct answer, whatever it is, the correct answer, whatever it is, is slightly less than 750. Among the four answer choices, only one answer choice will qualify as being slightly less than 750. Nobody in the, la nobody in the right bloody mind will tell you that 8, 8 is slightly less than 750. Nobody's going to tell you that 66 is slightly less than 750. And nobody in the right bloody mind is going to tell you, will argue, that 82 is slightly less than 750. 645 is the answer. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.